doors. We shall lift up praise. We shall lift up worship. Oh, give thanks unto you, God, for you are the one that saved us. You are the one that delivered us. You are the one that healed us. And we give your name praise. We support you in this place. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, God. We thank you. For it is so in your name we pray. Thank God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. It is so. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, RLC. So good to see you all. Just join us as we worship this afternoon. Come on, let's clap our hands. Hallelujah. Get ready to lift up the King of Kings.
lift him up? Can we clap our hands? He is Lord over my life, Lord over my mind, Lord over my heart, Lord over my finance. Come on, someone lift him up and say, there's only one. Hallelujah. 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 Can we give him praise? He is faithful this afternoon. He is holy. He is good. And that's why we lift him up today. Yes. holy your name is holy you are so holy to me I call you holy your name is holy holy you are and holy you be anybody believe he's holy today come on let's lift him up sing I call you holy your name is holy. You are so holy. Yeah, sing. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Sing holy. You are and holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you believe and say.
singing. Anybody believe that today? No matter what you need, he is able. Because great and mighty is our God. Yes. We can trust him. We can trust his character. Because pure and holy is our God. Sing pure and holy. him up he is holy he is mighty and that's why we worship him today yes. oh, somebody knows he's a mighty God he's a mighty God come on clap your hands if you know he's a mighty God there is no God like our God and we bless him we magnify him. Glory to God. I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Your name is holy. And holy you are. Holy you be. That song is just so wonderful. Just one last time. Say, I call you holy. I call you holy. Your name. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. I call you holy. Your name. Your name is holy. Holy you are. Holy you are. I just had to get some of that. Say, holy you are. Somebody ought to declare it. Say, holy you are. I hear y'all singing. Ooh, holy you are. Lift up your voice and say, righteous you are. Oh, I, yeah. Somebody say, righteous you are. Now somebody needs a healer. Say, healer. Ooh. I know him to be a healer, yes I do. Now somebody call him Savior, Savior. Yes you are. Come on, we might as well have some church here. Somebody call him Savior, Savior. Lift up your voice and say Savior. All right, we did it enough. Now come on, clap those hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Lift him up, somebody. If you know he's a savior, if you know he's a healer, if you know he's holy, you ought to call him holy right now. Just one last time. Say, holy you are. Holy you are. That's it. Somebody call him holy. That's it. Now say righteous you are. Yeah. I know him to be a righteous God. Say righteous. Now if you need some healing, say healer. Yeah. I know him to be. Anybody know him to be a healer? I tried him for myself and I know him to be a healer. Somebody no, 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 no. I know him to be 
a healer you are. It don't mean nothing until you've been in a sick bed. Healer. Somebody open up your mouth and say healer. Okay, that's good. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for another chance that you've allowed us to be here in your presence. And Father, we feel your presence all over the room today. And we feel your power all over the room today. And so we lift our hands and say, Lord, have your way today. Lord, move by your spirit. For by your stripes, we are healed. And somebody needs healing today. Physically healing today. Mentally healing today. Emotionally. Lord, heal us. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God and all of God's people said, Amen. Clap your hands and give God glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hey, glory to God. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. All the praise, glory, and honor be to our God. Thank God for each and every one of you. We're getting ready to go right into the word of the Lord. Just before we do that, will you do me a favor? And I want you to see or find someone who you don't know their name. And I just want you to get their name and tell them hello. And I'm so glad you are here. Will you do that for us today? Find one person. You may have to go across the aisle to do that. And maybe you don't know their name. But tell them my name is James, whatever your name is. And tell them, I'm so glad you are here. Hallelujah. I'm so glad you are here. Praise the name of our God. And those of you who are streaming with us today, we thank God for each and every one of you. And you have an opportunity, an opportunity to be a virtual evangelist. I'm asking you to take this time out and I want you to share the service on your Facebook page right here and right now. Those of you who are in the room, I want you to do the same thing. This is not a word that you want anyone to miss. And so I want you to share it with your friends right now. For God has a word for us. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. We're going right into the word. Matthew, we started on this we started on this on Wednesday. If you missed Bible class on Wednesday, you got to go back and watch it. We had a great time in the Lord. Matthew chapter 14. And we're going to start off at verse 14. We're reading from the New Living Translation. And as is our custom here at Redeeming Love, we stand for the reading of the word. Amen. So we're asking all of those who can, of course, of course, if there is for some reason that you cannot, we understand. But we ask all who can to stand for the reading of the word. Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to begin with verse 14. Amen. Just before we read it, just look around one time. Y'all see we growing? Y'all see it? You don't always see it because we stream, but we're growing, and I give God praise for our family. Amen? Amen. Verse 14, you'll find these words. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place. KJV says this is a desert place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. Verse 17, but we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. 18, Jesus says, 
bring them here. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. I might as well read. You won't see it on the screens because I didn't tell them, but might as well read to the end here. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers, about 5,000 to all the women and children. They all ate as much as they wanted. Today, I want you to help me preach this message. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to say it louder than that. Make sure they can hear you through the mask. Say, neighbor, it's time to eat. Now, come on, clap your hands and give God some praise on the way to your seats. It's time to eat. I happen to love competitive music shows. I love good music and I love watching the singers and the musicians on TV become coached and stretched to greatness. I enjoy the journey of young musicians who have an undeniable hunger for greatness. A few years back, Diddy produced a show called The Four. In this show, he made it clear he was not willing to waste his time on people who weren't hungry for greatness. He coined a term throughout the tenure of the show where he'd often say, it's time to eat. Later on, many of the people in the audience would just shout out, eat, eat, eat. They would chant it over and over, and it was really a coin that was termed uh, to say, listen, I didn't come all this way just to leave without what I came for. And I believe Diddy's going to help me preach this sermon today because I believe that there's some folk in here that can say, listen, I ain't got no time to waste. I, I came to church expecting to receive something. I got up this morning expecting to say, Lord, whatever it is you have for me, I'm expecting it and I'm not leaving until I get what I came for. I need to talk to somebody in here today that is passionate enough to say, Lord, I, I'm here right now, but I didn't come just to look cute. I, I may look good, but that's not why I came today. I, I'm, I know how to put it together, but that's not the reason I showed up today. Somebody in here can say, listen, I look good, but I'll sweat out this wig. I'll sweat out this makeup to do whatever it takes to get what I need from the Lord. Who am I talking to that can say the reason I pray? Praise God like I do. The reason I scream, the reason I shout, the reason I yell, the reason I run all over this house is because I found out that what God has for me, it is for me. And I'll be like Jacob. I'll wrestle until I get what I need from the Lord. Who in here can say I'm hungry for something? I came here because I need something. Now listen, if, if you don't have any needs, you can be quiet for the next 10 seconds. But for about 15 hungry folk, I need you to open up your mouth as loud as you can and say, Lord, I need your attention because I'm not leaving here until I get what I need from God. Oh, that was nice and that was pretty, but that ain't going to get no attention. Some, sometimes you got to be desperate enough to not care about who's next to you. Sometimes you got to be desperate enough to not care about who will look at you and who's on the other row. I need about seven folk that can say, listen, you don't understand what I've been going through. You don't understand all of the hell that I've been through. This praise is for the desperate. Somebody open up your mouth and say, Lord, I'm desperate for you I cry out to you because I'm hungry for what it is you have for me I bring that to you because these disciples here in this juncture of the text find themselves saying all right Lord you've been with these people all day long You've been with them from sun up. Now the sun is on its way down. Send these people home because it's time to eat and we don't have enough for everybody. 
But Jesus says, listen, I'm not in the business of sending people home empty. I wish y'all would catch this. I, I, I could send them home and tell them to fetch food for yourselves, but I'm not in the business of sending people home empty. And I'm talking to somebody in here who needs a word that understands. God says, I'm not in the business of sending you back to that marriage empty. I'm not in the business of sending you back to that job unfulfilled. I'm not in the business of sending you back to your family and you're still bitter and you have not forgiven God. God wants you fulfilled. God wants you fulfilled. This text, the disciples are saying, send them home. And Jesus is saying, sit them down. <laughs> the disciples are saying, send them home. But Jesus is saying, sit them down. I'm going to say it again. The disciples are saying, send them home. But Jesus is saying, sit them down. And I want you to know there are people that want you gone. But God is saying, I'm going to keep you right there until you get the biggest blessing of your life. Who am I talking to today that can say, if it were up to my friends, if it was up to the opinions of others, if it was up to my boss, they would have sent me another way. But tell somebody, take a seat. Can I tell you every once in a while God will sit you down in the place where others get jealous of you. They don't know how you got there. They don't know how it is that you live in the house that you're in. But I'm here to tell somebody get comfortable in your seat because uh, you can't leave until God gives you the very blessing that you have that he has in store for you. God says sit them down. The disciples have a whole different perspective. Some of y'all heard this on Wednesday, but I'll get you to where you need to go. The disciples had a whole different perspective because when they came to Jesus, they started their argument like this. They said, it's a desert place. It's a remote place and you need to get them out of here. Jesus response was sit them down in green grass. That's confusing to me. Usually there is not green grass in deserts. Amazing to me that Jesus saw green grass while other folk who were following Jesus saw deserts. And some of you, the reason people don't understand you is because God is showing you green grass, but everybody around you is looking at a desert and say they don't understand how it is that you are blessed the way that you are how it is that you can smile the way that you do how it is that you can shout the way that you shout but they don't understand that God showed you green grass in a desert can I speak over the house today God is providing green grass to your desert place I wish y'all could receive that. I wish y'all could understand in the spirit what I see right now. I'm here to tell you, God does not have to move your position to bless you. He can bless you in a dead place. He can, he can bless you in a dry spot. He can bless you in a place where other folk are saying, get out. But God says, I'm going to sit you down in green grass. It's time to eat. Jesus says, sit down in green grass. That's why you got to be careful uh, when you listen to other people who don't understand what God showed you. Uh, I saw this on Facebook, but, but, but this search, somebody came up with it. They said, don't get, understand, don't get up, uh, upset when people don't understand the call that God placed on your life. Because when he called you, it was not a conference call. In other words, everybody ain't got to understand what God has placed in your spirit. Everybody ain't got to understand why you're still faithful in your marriage. Everybody don't have to understand why you're still working at the job that you're working on. Everybody don't have to understand. Just know God will give you green grass in a desert place. So I can't worry about other folks who are talking about my desert. Because I'm eating real good in a desert place. 
I'm talking to somebody that knows that God has a habit of showing you right in the middle of your dry spot that he can fulfill you. That he can feed you when other folks said you were supposed to die. That he can give you exactly what you need. Do I have any folk that can testify with me today? Is there somebody that can say, I saw God feed me in a desert. I saw God heal my family in a desert. I saw God deliver me in a desert. I saw God soften my heart in a desert. Who am I talking to that knows God may not change your place physically, but he can change your heart. Tell somebody I'm getting ready to eat. I'm almost done. I meant to tell y'all brother Marcus is preaching today at perfecting at three o'clock. So I'm going to cut some corners today so I can go support the man of God. Uh, The text says here uh, uh, that he uh, Jesus says, I want y'all to sit down in green grass. They saw a desert. He saw green grass, but they listened to him. They sat the people down. Uh, uh, but it was so funny because the disciples are having this time with Jesus where they keep saying, you, Jesus, you know, we don't have enough. Do, I counted all of the people. It's 5,000 men besides the women and the children. And most uh, theologians say that it, it ended up being close to about 20,000 people. When you add the women and the children, because they, in their custom, they only counted the men and they counted 5,000 men. Almost 20,000 people with two fish and five barley loaves. How in the world, Jesus, have you lost your mind? How in the world are we going to feed all of these people and there's barely enough food for us disciples? How do you expect us to feed all of these people when we barely have enough ourselves? Jesus says, well, how much do you have? They said two fish, five barley loaves. He says, give it to me. This is the place where I found out that the problem was never the quantity. It was the carrier. That's going to you. It's going to reach you when you get home tonight. The problem was never the quantity. It was always the carrier. And for some of you, the reason that you feel overwhelmed right now is because you're carrying stuff that you should not be carrying. Y'all real quiet. I'm not trying to step on your toes. But the reason that you are so stressed out and so anxious and you keep having panic attacks and anxiety attacks is because you're carrying the problems that never belong to you. You're carrying people's finances that never belong to you. You're carrying uh, the problems and the issues of people that never belong to you. But I wish there was somebody in here on this Saturday afternoon that can say whatever it is that I have, I'm giving it back to God I know who should be carrying it the problem was never the quantity it was always the carrier and the disciples became so distracted hear this y'all by their problems that they focused on their problem and forgot who was in their presence They got so distracted by their problems, by their lack, by whatever in their in their possession was not enough that they forgot who was in their presence. Don't you understand that there is no lack in the presence of God? And many of us, we are sitting down. I see it every Sunday, counting your money, trying to figure out what can I give in church so I can have a little something to go get me something to eat. And I can make sure I have my lottery money for next week. And many people are sitting here saying, when I look at my finances, I don't have enough. You don't understand that there is no lack in the presence of God. I wish there was somebody in here that would look at your finances right now and say, I see what the quantity is, but I know the carrier of. I wish there was somebody in here today that can say, I'm looking at my bank account versus my bills. I see the quantity, but I know the carrier. I'm looking at what the doctor says. I know the quantity. I know the quantity, but I also know the carrier. I wish there was somebody in here that would say, thank God for the carrier. I thank God that he carries my problems. I I thank God that he carries my issues. I thank God that he carries my family. I thank God that he carries what I carry.
can't handle. There's somebody in here that can say, listen, I can't focus on the quantity no more because I know the carrier. And my attitude changed when I realized that he can carry what I drop. Oh, I wish somebody was up in here with me today. My attitude changed when I found out that what I was carrying was too heavy for me. But when I turned it over to Jesus. Stop worrying about the quantity and pay attention to the carrier. If God says it's time to eat, don't worry about your lack. Just set the table. I wish somebody would be in here with me. If God says it's time to eat, don't worry about what the doctor said. Just set the table. I'm getting ready to get up out of here in just a minute and eat flat. If God says it's time to eat, don't worry about what uh, your boss said. Tell somebody just set the table. I wish there was somebody up in here today that can say, I'm about to set the table. I'm about to prepare for the biggest blessing of my life. I'm about to set the table for my family. That goes far beyond my generation, but it's going to go into the next generation. Tell somebody, just set the table. Set the table. Psalm 23, he says... <laughs> The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. They come for me. Here's where I'm trying to go. He says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. I said, he said, I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Somebody didn't hear it the way that you should. He says, I'm not going to wait until your enemies disperse. But I'm going to start preparing the table right now. And I wish there was somebody in here that can say, God is preparing me. I know what my bank account says, but God is carrying me. I know what the doctor said, but God is preparing me for the biggest blessing of my life. Tell your neighbor, it's time to eat. It's time to be blessed. It's time to be satisfied. It's time to be fulfilled. I wish there was somebody here that could give God a praise right now and say, I'm preparing myself. I know what the other folks said and nobody's going to understand it, but I know that God's got something great in store for me. Look at what the Bible says. And this is my last observation. It simply says this. That God took the bread. And the Bible says. That he blessed it. And then he broke it. First he blessed it. And then he broke it. First he blessed it. And then he broke it. And what you find out is. The bread did more broken. Than it did when it was whole. Y'all missed that thing. But it blessed me last night. I'm here to talk to some broken folk in here. To let you know today. That God can do more in your broken state. Than he can do when you thought you had it together. But tell somebody. Tell somebody. I might be broken. But I'm blessed. I might not have it all together. But I'm blessed. My bank account might look like I wanted to. <laughs> but I'm blessed. I wish I could have about 18 of y'all that would just begin to shout out, I'm blessed. It don't matter what it look like, I'm blessed. It don't matter what they said, I'm blessed. It don't matter what they're talking about, I'm blessed. It don't matter what the doctor say, I'm blessed. Is there somebody here that would give God a praise? That can say, I thank you because you blessed me before you broke me. Now I got a word for every devil in hell 
that's been trying to break you for every false relationship that's been trying to break you for every job that's been trying to break your mentality I got a word the worst thing you can do is break somebody that's already blessed the worst thing you can do is break somebody that's already been blessed and here is what I want to tell you today that you're going to go farther because you were blessed before you were broken and a promotion is coming to you and healing is coming to you and deliverance is coming to you I wish there was somebody here that would give God a praise and say God's going to do it and I ain't got to be whole for him to do it. I ain't got to be perfect for him to do it. I ain't got to get everything right before he do it. Because God can bless me in my desert, in my broken place, in the place that everybody despised me, in the place that everybody talked about me, in the place where they tried to hold me down. I got to let this go. I got to let this go. But is there somebody here that can say, Lord, I bless you because I'm about to go further than I could when I was whole. I wish there was somebody that could be excited right now. Look at your neighbor and look at them in the eye. Look at your neighbor and look at them in the eye and say, neighbor, I'm on assignment today to let you know you're about to eat. Prepare your table. Prepare for the biggest blessing of your life. Prepare for the promotion. Prepare for the blessing. Prepare for forgiveness. Prepare for a new attitude. Somebody just yell out, prepare. Tell somebody, get ready. It's about to happen. Get ready. God's about to turn some things around. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Yeah, get ready. The reason your enemies are going to get uncomfortable is because your praise is going to prove to them that you're ready. I'm ready to make some devils tremble today. I'm ready to make some devils tremble under our feet today. Because I believe somebody's got a praise today that can say, I'm ready for what God has for me. And I found out that God can bless me in my desert place. God can bless me in my dry spot. God can bless me while I'm broken. God can bless me with tears running down my face. God can bless me in between jobs. God can bless me right where I am. Come on somebody and give God a praise right where you are and say God's going to do it right here. Come on say God's going to do it and he's going to do it right here. Tell somebody, I just believe God. Come on, clap those hands and give God some praise. Give Him the glory. Give Him the honor. It's about to happen. Thank you. I just feel like God is up in here, y'all. And sometimes when you know God is here, you don't need musicians. 
You don't need nobody to push you and to pump you and to prime you. But I need you to give God a praise right now that will signify all the way to heaven. Go to the one that will signify all the way to heaven that you are preparing your life for the biggest blessing of your life. Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. It's okay, you can be loud. You can be indignant. Just open up your mouth and say, Lord, I'm ready. I want you. Yes, Lord. While you're still in the spirit of worship, I want you to take this moment right now. And I want you to prepare your offering. I want you to prepare your offering. In this moment. Now, don't ever get quiet during offering time. No, no, that ain't the time to be quiet. This is the time for you to say, Lord, I heard the word that you said. And now I'm going to sow a seed into the promise that you have over my life. I want somebody who is excited and honored to be able to sow into the house of God. To open up your mouth and give God some praise. Now listen, hallelujah. Glory to God. The ways to give are on the screen. Cash app. Of course you can go to the website. RLCDetroit.com. And if you need an envelope, I want you to raise your hand as quick as possible so that we can make sure that we serve you. Every person. Every person who needs an envelope, you have that opportunity. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Go ahead and prepare your offering. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Come on. I am so glad that the Lord saved me. Come on. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Come on, clap your hands. One more time. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Softly, listen, as we shared on last week, ever, I think ever since Thanksgiving, we are preparing to be a blessing to the community and to those who are connected to our church who have who have asked us to adopt their families we have six so far who have asked us to adopt their families and two of the families have asked that they be baptized come on y'all give God some praise they say I don't just want gifts but I actually want to be able to, to be a part of the body of Christ so I can continue to be connected to the gift that keeps on giving because that's what it's really about. God bless you. When you are finished uh, filling out your envelope, go ahead and stand. And those of you who are streaming, you have an opportunity to bless the Lord in your giving as well. Now listen, even if you don't have anything to give, you can stand. And we're going to pray that you have an opportunity to give your next time. God bless you and God keep you. It's so good to see so many of you out today. Amen. Can't wait to shake everybody. Well, to shake some of your hands. <laughs> Fist bump. There we go. I can't wait to do that. Listen, I want y'all to be real careful. Uh, I would love to be able to hug everybody, uh, but it's just not safe right now. 
we are still, I need y'all to hear that, we are still in a global pandemic. Do y'all understand that? I'm saying that because I want you to be safe. I want you to be safe. I want you to be safe. This is why every person who is here should have a mask on. And I'm seeing people who don't have masks on. I'm asking you to put them on because we know that the rule is for us to have masks on. And no one should have came in here today without getting a mask because we have people at the door who take care of that. Amen? I'm not trying to be mean, but it's for your safety. Because at the end of the day, if we had an outbreak in our church, who would they blame? They would blame the pastor. Amen. So I'm asking you to be conscious of that. Of course, if you're singing, you have an opportunity to take your mask off and to sing and then to place your mask back on. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Amen. And does anybody not have a mask? Because before we dismiss today, you should have a mask on. Amen. You need a mask? You got one? Just come over around this way. Thank you so much. They're coming. Amen. I love you. Let's stand. We're all standing. We're going to have a word of prayer. God bless you. And we've asked that every person over and above your tithes and your offering, we are asking that you my brother and my sister, would bless the Lord um, with an additional gift so that we can be a blessing to these families. And that gift is of $100 over and above your regular, regular tithes and offering. So I'm asking you to consider that today, amen, as we are going to be a blessing to each of these families in a special way. Can y'all help me with that? God bless you. Let's pray over our offering. You can lift your envelope or your electronic device or you can lift your hand if you don't have anything to give. And we want to bless that hand that the Lord would give you something to give the very next time. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We honor you. We love you. We appreciate you. And we thank you for another chance to sow into your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that when others see lack, you've showed us green grass. Father, I speak green grass into the lives of every person who stand before us and those who are streaming. In the name of Jesus, there shall be no lack associated with us. Because we are willing and obedient, we shall eat of the good of the land. Thank you, Father, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And all of God's people said, Amen. At this time, if you have an envelope, we ask that you would remain standing. Every person who gave electronically, you can be seated. And our officers will be around to get to receive your offering at this time. We're asking for the worship team to come on up, and we're going to prepare for communion. We're asking for everyone to get in place, those of you, you know who you are, as we're going to prepare for communion. Amen? I pray the word today blessed your soul today. Anybody blessed by the word today? <laughs> Hallelujah. And y'all, we have one of the greatest music teams ever. Will y'all give God praise for our worship team and our musicians that blessed us in such a mighty way? Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Our officers, you guys can sit that back there and come on out for communion. Amen. God bless you. Let me go ahead and get these announcements out of the way as they're preparing for communion. We are praying. Um, Brother Lakey is here today. Y'all know he moved to Chicago. Amen. Big money Lakey. That's what they call him. <laughs> we thank God for him. He is back. And we're praying for the Lakey family, the Bolden family, the Woods family, and so many others who are connected to our ministry in the loss of... Mr. Samuel Davis, uh, we call him Barbecue Sam. Uh, we give God praise for his life, amen, who ended up joining our ministry while he was in hospice, streaming every Sunday. And um, I count it an honor to be able to celebrate his life along with his family. And those funeral arrangements are December 13th. The family hour is 12.30 p.m., the funeral will start promptly at 1 p.m., and it'll be here at the church. And I promise you, we don't hold long funerals. Amen. So come on, and you want to be on time, and we're going to celebrate 
as a family, and we're going to hold up the Lakey family, the Bolden family, and the Woods family. Amen? Amen. Amen. Again, Marcus Stringer is preaching today at 3 p.m. at Perfecting Church. And so uh, if you can't make it, just uh, send a prayer up for him. And uh, so he came in today. He, I told him he could have been off, but he still wanted to be with his RLC family. And so he came and, and he had to leave so that he could prepare for the word. You can watch it on Perfecting's uh, stream as well um, if you can't make it. Amen? Amen. God bless you and God keep you. We're going to prepare for communion at this time. Just before we pass out this holy sacrament, I want to make sure that each of you remember that this moment is not something that should be taken lightly. The Word of God says, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. This is what Jesus says to us. It shows and it symbolizes the suffering that took place on the cross and he didn't do it for himself. Jesus died for you and for me. And today, I'm asking you to think about any area of your life where you may have fallen short. All of us have, including myself. And I want you to take a moment to bow your heads and have a silent prayer on this last first Sunday of the year. There are some areas where we just did not meet the mark. But we're asking for forgiveness. And I want you to know God's blood is powerful enough to erase every sin. To erase every mistake. Bow your heads in silence just for a moment. And then we will pray together. Father, you are holy. And we thank you, Father God, that a holy God desires a holy people. So if there be anything, Father, right now that was not pleasing in your sight, I ask right now, Lord God, that you will forgive us. We thank you, Father God, for the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all sins and sets us free. We thank you, Father God, that when we leave here today, we will not be the same. We will be forever changed. We thank you for forgiveness of sin. We thank you for freedom of sin, Lord God. I ask that you would bless this sacrament, Lord God. Help us to use it in the, in the purpose that it was given to us, Father God. Help us to remember what you did for us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and thank God. Holy One. I never want to let you down no more. Holy one, I never want to let you down no 
at this time, I'm asking you to take the bread. This bread. As you take it, I want you to break it because it represents the body of the Lord broken for you and for many. Let's eat it together. And now you'll take the cup. This cup represents the blood that was shed for you and for me. Because of this blood, every sin is covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. You got a clean slate. Let's drink together. Somebody say, thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. Let's stand. We're going to prepare to be dismissed at this time. Remember, we are, for the entire month of December, we are giving generously so that we can be a blessing to these families. And also remember that we are praying for the Lakey family, the Bowden family, the Woods family, and the Davis family in the loss of Mr. Samuel Davis. We know God is a comforter. And um, I'm believing that God is going to send comfort. I believe he's already doing it now to that family. We're also praying for my family and for Raina Sobers. Amen. As the Lord continues to comfort her. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that on this last first Sunday of the year, we can still say you are a good God. You are an amazing God. And we thank you, Lord, because millions didn't make it here. But you allowed us to. And that means you're not done with us yet. So, Lord, prepare us for the biggest blessing of our lives. Help us to end this year strong. Strong in faith. Strong in discipline. Strong in peace. And let it reflect the decisions that we make. That you would get the glory, not just when we sing. Not just when we pray, not just when we come to church, but that all of our decisions will reflect your glory. Now, Father, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, protect us and keep us. We plead the blood of Jesus upon every life that is represented in this room. And we stand on your word that no weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Thank God. And all of God's people said, amen. Be dismissed in Jesus' name.